An important thing to keep in mind about the Android developer tools is that Google updates them quite often. So if you come to the main SDK site and click on this ADT link, this will takes you to the page that tells you about the ADT plugin. It's going to tell you what the latest version is and also what has changed in this new version. Now, when I originally recorded this course, we were using ADT version 11. Well, since then, Google has released version 12. And I'm going to talk about what some of these new changes are. But in general, you're going to want to visit this page often to make sure that you're using the latest version of ADT. So I'm going to come over to Eclipse. Now, most of the changes that have happened in 12 deal with the UI editor. And they've actually really done some nice things to make working with this UI editor a lot easier. But they've also added a new feature in the XML wizard. So if I go to create a new XML file, I mentioned a couple of times in the course that there was no option for drawable. And we actually created an XML file manually. Now this will completely work the way that I taught it by creating it manually, um, but we can now use this nice option for it. So let's say I wanted to create a rectangle um, using the a drawing API. Well, I can create my XML, choose drawable, and now it's going to allow me to select from a whole bunch of different root elements. I can choose shape and click OK. And now it's created a blank shape XML file and put it into my drawable folder. So this is exactly what we did manually in the course, but it's now been automated with this nice option. So now when we look at the actual UI editor, I want to show you a couple of things here. First is if I bring out, let's say, a button here and place it here, we can see we now have these drag handles. And this is going to allow us to resize components directly here inside of the UI. And previously, we would have to go into the properties panel and set a specific value. But this is a really nice addition that allows us to resize elements using these drag handles. Now, another thing that I can do, let me just delete this is I can easily change the layout for my activity. If I go to the XML here, we can see that this is using a linear layout. Well, let's say that I wanted to use a relative layout. I can just right click and choose change layout. This is gonna allow me to change to any of the different types of layouts. I'm gonna choose relative layout and click okay. Now, speaking of relative layouts, there's been some nice additions to visually help you when you're moving components around in your application. So if I drag out a button widget, we can see I'm getting these green arrow indicators and it's telling me what the values are gonna be if I drop this widget right here. And we can see that little readout on the right is changing. I can see what those margin values are gonna be. I can also easily center it here and it's gonna set the center horizontal and center vertical properties to true. I can also just drop it, you know, anywhere here, and it's going to set those margin values for me. So if I come to the XML, we can see it set the margin left and top using device independent pixels, which is really nice. So let's say that I have this here, I drop it here, but I want this text view and my button to be wrapped inside of another container. Well, I can easily do that. I can shift select both of them, right click, and choose wrap in container. This is gonna allow me to wrap those two widgets inside of a new container. And let's say I wanna wrap it in a linear layout. I'll just call it new layout and click okay. And now you can see that we have our two widgets that are wrapped inside of a linear layout. Again, previously we would have to go into the XML and manually do that. So again, it's just a nice time saving feature for you to use. Now, another change involves uh, how we deal with images and media. So let's say that I wanted to add an image view into my layout here. Well, I'm just gonna drag it in and drop it. Now you'll notice that it immediately pops open a new window, which is the resource chooser window. And this is gonna allow me to set the source of that image view equal to any of the resources that are in my project. And we can see that I actually get a preview of that resource. So here I have some photos from the exercise files and I can click through these and choose the one that I actually wanna use. 
Um, I could choose a system resource, and this is a really nice thing that allows you to basically go through um, all of the built-in resource types that are in Android. So before, in a couple of movies in the course, we actually did this, but we didn't have a way to preview these easily. So I'm going to do project resources. I'm going to select this, click OK, and now you can see we have our image correctly set. Now, another area that has changed is the way it deals with text widgets. So in the course, you'll notice that we had a text view, we had an edit text view, and you know a few other options for text. Well, now it's been broken out into all of these different ones. So for form widgets, we have a text view, which actually we can see right here. We have large text. If I place that there, we have medium text, and we have small text. So now what this is doing is these are all text view widgets. If I come into the main XML, we can see that the difference is this text appearance property has been set to text appearance large, text appearance medium, and text appearance small. So basically, you'll need to keep that in mind. But as we go through the course, remember I was using ADT 11, so we don't have these other options, which is basically just a text view, but it just has that text style applied to it. So for text fields, these are now all of the edit text fields. Now there is only one edit text field widget in Android. So if I drag this out, we can see that we have a edit text field here, and let me just make it span across. And this is the text field that we use to input text. Well, in version 11 of ADT, again, we just had an edit text that we could drag out. But the input type, which I went over, if we actually go into the properties here, if I select this, and if we come down to input type, there's a whole host of different input types for an edit text field. And we went over this in the course, but these have now been basically extracted. So we have an edit text field here for an email, edit text field for phone, and so on and so forth. So it saves you a step from having to do that. And we can see the one I dragged out, we have edit text field, and it's basically just using plain text. If I now come out and let's say I drag out one for phone number, now I have an edit text field that's specific for a phone number. Well, let's see what that looks like. If we come and let me minimize this here. Again, we just have a regular edit text field, but you can see the input type has been set to phone. So that's really all these different options are. It's basically just an edit text widget with the input type already set for you. So again, those are the main differences that you're going to need to be aware of between version 12 of ADT and version 11. So again, you're going to want to make sure you stay up to date on what the latest versions of these developer tools are so that you can always have the latest tools available for you as you're doing your Android development.